Hey you guys, this is Mr. Millings and in this video we are going to learn about equivalence statements and we're going to learn how to apply an equivalence statement to solve uh, different types of problems that we'll be working on throughout the course of the, uh, the chemistry school year. And so here's a little disclaimer for us. It says right here that prior knowledge of the topics listed below is essential before watching this video. And I recommend you check out the video on the SI system where we learn about the different metric prefixes before you start watching this video. So let's jump right in and start talking about equivalence statements and then apply that uh, that idea to several different sample problems at the end. And so what is an equivalent statement? Well, it says right here that an equivalent statement represents the relationship between two quantities, each of which equals the other. And in order to write an equivalent statement, you must know the relationship between the two quantities before you even begin to write an equivalent statement. So let's take a look at a few equivalent statements and hopefully you catch on. If we take a look right here, we have an equivalent statement that tells us that one foot equals 12 inches, right? So we use some prior knowledge and we create an equivalent statement that uh, shows the relationship between two quantities. We know one foot equals 12 inches. And so here's our equivalent statement right here. And we can also write this equivalent statement as a fraction. We can write it like we see right here, one foot over 12 inches, or we can write the same equivalent statement right here as 12 inches over one foot. So we have an equivalent statement right here, one foot equaling 12 inches. Let's take a look next door. We know that 60 minutes equals one hour. So here's our equivalent statement. And we can also write this equivalent statement as a fraction or two different fractions. We can say that one hour is 60 minutes or one hour over 60 minutes. And we can say that 60 minutes is one hour or 60 minutes over one hour. If we take a look right here, one pint equals two cups. We can express this equivalent statement as a fraction as well. We can put one pint over two cups or we can put two cups over one pint. And if we take a look right here, we see that one yard equals three feet. And we can express this as one yard over three feet, or we can write this as three feet over one yard. One minute equals 60 seconds. You guessed it. We can write this as one minute over 60 seconds, or 60 seconds over one minute. And last but not least, if we take a look, we know that four quarts equals one gallon. And so here's our equivalent statement, and we can write this or express this in chemistry as a fraction and write it like we see right here, one gallon over four quarts or four quarts over one gallon. Let's take a look now at some SI system or metric system equivalence statements. And so here we go. Let's take a look at some uh, examples of some SI system or some metric system equivalent statements. And it says right here that when writing SI system equivalent statements, you must have memorized the most common SI system metric prefixes along with their numerical meaning. For example, in an earlier video, we learned that the prefix kilo means a thousand or 10 to the third. And so memorizing the SI system metric prefixes will help you to write correct equivalent statements. So let's go ahead and take a look. Here's an equivalent statement right here. We know that one liter is 1,000 milliliters, and we can express this as a fraction. We can write this as one liter over 1,000 milliliters, or we can flip this over and we can express this as 1,000 milliliters over one liter. If we take a look next door, we know that there are 100 centimeters in one meter. The prefix centi means one one hundredth. So there's 100 of these small little centimeters in one meter. And we can express this equivalent statement as a fraction. We can write this as one meter over 100 centimeters or 100 centimeters over one meter. If we take a look at this one, we know that the prefix kilo means a thousand. So 
there are 1,000 small little grams in one big kilogram. And we can express this equivalent statement as a fraction. We can write this as 1,000 grams over one kilogram, or we can write this as one kilogram over 1,000 grams. If we take a look down here, we know that one gram is 1,000 milligrams. They equal each other. And so we can express this equivalent statement as a fraction. We can write one gram over 1,000 milligrams, or 1,000 milligrams over one gram. If we take a look right here, we know that one kiloliter or kiloliter is 1,000 liters. The prefix kilo means 1,000. So there's 1,000 small liters in one big kiloliter or kiloliter. And so we can express this equivalent statement like we see right here, one kiloliter over 1,000 liters or 1,000 liters over a kiloliter. And last but not least, if we take a look, we know that there's 10 millimeters in one centimeter, right? 10 millimeters equals one centimeter. And we can express this equivalent statement here as a fraction by writing one centimeter over 10 millimeters or 10 millimeters over one centimeter. All right, so that's how we're gonna start to write uh, the different metric system or SI system equivalent statements. And so now let's go ahead and apply this idea of equivalent statements to solving uh, a vi uh, different types of, of problems. And so let's go ahead and apply this concept of equivalence statements to solve a bunch of different problems here. It says right here, to fill in the empty spaces with the correct equivalence statements that help solve the problems below. So we have a problem set up right here that tells us we have 3.50 centimeters and we wanna figure out how many millimeters this is. So in order to solve this problem, we have to come up with the correct equivalent statement that is gonna allow us to solve this problem. So what is gonna go in this empty space right here? Well, if you take a look, the given quantity is expressed in centimeters and our answer needs to be expressed in millimeters. So we have to come up with some sort of equivalent statement between these two units of measurement. And so we know from prior knowledge and a prior uh, lesson that one centimeter equals 10 millimeters, right? That there are 10 millimeters in one centimeter. And so if we wanna express this as a fraction, we can write this as one centimeter over 10 millimeters, or we can express this as 10 millimeters over one centimeter. So which of these two equivalent statements will we use to put in this empty space right here? Will we use this one right here, or are we gonna use this one right here? Well, if we take a look, we wanna cancel out the unit centimeters. And so units can cancel out just like numbers. And so if we have the same unit on the bottom of this fraction right here, then it will end up canceling when we do our math. So we're gonna put centimeters at the bottom here. We're gonna put millimeters on the top here. And now what's the relationship between these two units of measurement? Well, we know that there are 10 millimeters in one centimeter. And so what does this look like right here? Which of these two equivalent statements does this step look like? Well, that looks like it's gonna be this equivalent statement right here that we ended up using. And so now if we take a look, centimeters is gonna cancel out. And the only unit left over here is millimeters. And so we take our calculator out and we take 3.50 times 10, and we're gonna end up with an answer or a final answer of 35.0 millimeters. So 3.50 centimeters equals 35.0 millimeters. And the equivalent statement that we used to solve this problem is 10 millimeters over one centimeter. Let's take a look at this problem right here. In this problem right here, we have 0 0.5 meters, and we wanna know how many kilometers this is. So we have to come up with some sort of equivalent statement to put in this empty space right here. And so we have to think about this, right? We have to think about this. We know that there are 1,000 meters in one kilometer. How do we know that? Well, in an earlier video, we talked about metric prefixes and we learned that the prefix kilo means a thousand. And so there's a thousand of these small little meters in one big kilometer or kilometer. And so here is our equivalency statement. And we can express this as a fraction. We can write this as one kilometer over 1000 meters. Or we can write this as 1,000 meters over one kilometer. 
And so which of these two are we going to use to put in this empty space right here? Well, we want to cancel out meters, so we're going to put that at the bottom of this equivalency statement. And we want to convert this to, kil to kilometers. And so what's the relationship between these two? Well, we know that there are 1,000 meters in one kilometer. And so which of these two equivalence statements did we use? We ended up using this one right here to solve this little problem here. Meters now will cancel out because we have meters on the top and we have meters on the bottom of a fraction. They will cancel out. And so now we just take 0 0.5 and we divide that by a thousand and we'll end up with 0 0.0005 kilometers. So 0 0.5 meters equals 0 0.0005 kilometers. Let's take a look at this one right here. We have 23.3 grams. We want to convert this to kilograms. So what is the equivalency statement going to be or equivalence statement going to be here? We have grams to kilograms. And so we know that there's 1,000 grams in one big kilogram. And we can express this equivalence statement by writing it as a fraction. We can either say that there are 1,000 grams in one kilogram, or we can say that there is one kilogram in 1,000 grams. And so which of these two are we going to use to fill in this empty space right here? Well, if we take a look, we want to cancel out grams. So grams is going to have to go at the bottom of this fraction right here. And we're going to convert this to kilograms. So that's going to go on the top. And so we know that there is 1,000 grams in a kilogram. And so we ended up using this equivalence statement right here. If we take a look now, grams on top and bottom will cancel, leaving us with kilograms as the only unit left over. And so we take 23.3 and we divide that by 1,000, and we will end up with 0 0.0233 kilograms. Let's take a look at this final one. We have 2.75 liters. We want to know how many milliliters this is. So what is the equivalence statement we're going to use right here? Well, we know that one liter equals 1,000 of these little milliliters. We know the prefix milli means one one thousandth. So there's a thousand of these little milliliters in one big liter. And we can express this as two sets of fractions here. We can write this as one liter over 1,000 milliliters. Or we can express this as 1,000 milliliters over one liter. And so which one are we going to use? Are we going to use this one or are we going to use this one? Well, we want to cancel out liters here in this step right here. We want to cancel out the liters. So we'll put that at the bottom of this fraction or equivalence statement. And we want to convert this to milliliters. So we'll put that at the top. And so we know that there's a thousand milliliters in one liter. And look what happens now. Liters on top and bottom will cancel. So we take our calculator and we take 2.75 times a thousand and we end up with 2,750 milliliters. And so that's how we're going to apply equivalence statements to solving a bunch of different problems uh, throughout your first year chemistry course. And so if you like what you see, go ahead and click that little bomb in the bottom right hand corner and that's going to subscribe you to my channel. And feel free to leave any comments or questions down in the comment section down below. And I really hope you guys found this helpful.